Hi. Hey. Can you hear me? Yep. Loud Great. Clear. All right. Take it away. All right. Let me share my screen. Um, thank you everyone for joining um, my session. Um, and thank you so much to the speaker before um, covering how to contribute to open source communities. I absolutely loved your talk and loved all of your um, enthusiasm around contributing and especially your advice to stay humble. I feel like that is such a actually a really big part of it. Um, so I am the community manager for opensource.com, um, which is a publication supported and sponsored by Red Hat. So um, I am a Red Hat employee. Um, opensource.com is part of the Red Hat um, marketing team, um, but it's, you know, kind of an arm's length away in terms of like, we really try to focus on the open source community at large, um, out in the world, global, um, anyone's welcome. And um, we've been around for 11 years. Uh, so we've learned a lot in that time about working with the community. Um, and really the way that we do that is, um, we encourage our readers, the readers of opensource.com to become writers. And of course you don't have to, reading is great. That's a great way to participate and learn and be a part of our community. But um, we're focused on getting user generated content. So people who are actually using the technology in one way or another do not have to be an expert, um, but just using the technology, getting to know different tools, um, is is really our um, our focus. Um, so our community um, uh, internally, uh, or our team internally, our editorial team is really focused on connecting with the community. Um, so we've learned a lot of things about that over the years. So to the point of the of the talk before, you know, I, I would be happy to talk about that at some point or answer questions about um, things we've learned. But the point of this talk is about um, something a little bit different, which is um, what stories we are seeing really resonate with our readers. So cur current stories about software development today. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about what we see as really popular on opensource.com today. Um, and hopefully this will give you some insight into, you know, just what's interesting to people what developers and sysadmins and other open source enthusiasts are into these days. Um, and if you feel inspired at any point to um, talk to us about writing for us or pitching an idea, please do. Um, so, you know, I think it's about learning, but it's also about if, it, if you see ways that you could participate, we'd love for you to do that. Um, so let me start with a couple of things. We're going to talk about what's popular, Linux, Kubernetes, Raspberry Pi, and I'll dig in a little bit um, to get a little bit more specific about what around those topics is popular. And again, these stories are published on opensource.com. We've been publishing for 11 years. We publish two to three articles every single day, um, one, one or two on the weekend. Um, and we've been doing that for, for a while. So we really have an amazing body of work, a lot of um, fantastic articles, and we do kind of see what does, the, does better with readers. And we rank that and we look back at that and we say, okay, let's write more about this because this is really interesting to people right now, or these are the problems that people have right now, let's focus on that. And again, the people who are writing this are, uh, users of the technology, people out in the community. This is about corporate, I mean, this is about community, not about corporate um, topics in, in terms of um, the, the main focus for our contributors. And then our, um, we have a key group of contributors that we call the correspondents. So a, a couple of a quick stats at a glance for opensource.com is that in, in 2021 so far, we've had around 200 authors, so people who have contributed an article, around 500 articles. So you'll see that some of those authors are repeats and um, a, around 2 million reads um, a month of those articles. So this is um, a look at the, um, if you apply the, where the people are reading on the map. So, you know, you're seeing a heavy influence in the United States, India, um, Europe, Australia, 
you know, in some other, in some other places, Canada. Um, and then, you know, you can see, you can kind of dive into the, the different locations there, but it is a global audience. So let's look at our most popular topics. Two categories to focus on here is most covered and most read. So most covered means these are the topics that people write about the most often and most read, meaning these are the most popular from in terms of page views and unique visitors and they overlap, right? So Linux is number one. There's no question in anyone's mind on opensource.com that um, we have a very heavy Linux audience. So um, anything from how to use commands to a Linux tool, to celebrating Linux, uh, the Linux 30th anniversary, which we did recently on the site um, with some Linux modules. Um, uh, so we really have, you know, kind of run the gamut of different Linux type topics um, and they're all really popular. Uh, we focus on programming. Um, so that can go into um, frameworks, that can go into languages, that can go into my programming story. Um, we, we really actually like to write about people's experiences. Um, and we try to use that as a tool to share what people have gone through to figure out um, what to learn first. So great resources for getting started. Uh, what programming languages people like to start with or just experiences that they've had learning those tools or, and learning those languages. Um, yeah, you'll see, so you'll see, you know, Python in here, Java, um, JavaScript is another great one, not on this list, um, but another one that's kind of up and coming in our list. Um, another thing you'll see here is Raspberry Pi. We have a really large Raspberry Pi audience. Um, not all open hardware is a great, is popular, although it is definitely a topic that we love to cover. Um, there's a lot of really neat, you know, at home projects, weekend projects, um, that kind of thing that people do with the open hardware. Uh, we cover Kubernetes extensively. So that's a, that's a great angle for us. And we're focused on, um, uh, you know, the open options, the open source options here, of course, opensource.com. Uh, so we say focused in that lane. Uh, we, we also do things around careers. Um, this kind of falls into the what's been your experience category. Um, so we like to hear how people got started, what their journey has been, where they are now, advice they might have. Um, we often do a, you know, five, top five um, questions that you might get asked in an interview if you're interviewing for blank, whether that's to be a sysadmin or a developer or, um, you know, lots of different options in that space. Um, so we also have a great, um, a great category here for open source alternatives. Um, you know, people use proprietary tools and that's great. We're not trying to pretend like that is not reality, but we do like to present our readers with options. If you're, if you're an open source enthusiast, you know, you're looking for open source options, open source tools that could be an alternative to other things that you're using. So that's a really fun one. Um, people will write in with like, hey, I started using this new tool. It's an alternative to Evernote. It's an alternative to Trello. Um, so that's, that's a fun one. And if you have any ideas on that, we'd love to hear it. So you can peruse this list, you know, lots of great stuff there. And then this third column is around um, our most wanted. So these are things that we're looking for people to write, um, ideas that we have. And again, you're going to see a lot of overlap, but the top two bullets here I want to focus on bite-sized tutorials and Linux commands and tools. Um, so we often have people say, you know, I could write a tutorial about how to use this tool or how to use this Linux command, but it's been written before, or I'm not the expert. But the truth is, is that every time somebody new writes about how to use something, they bring something new, usually, right? Not all the time, but usually true is that they bring something new in terms of um, they have some insight into how to use it or some idea 
about how to get creative using the tool or they use it in a way that no other tutorial has ever talked about using it um, or they just share something about their experience using it. So we really love to share those and they do very well. Um, Google does not care that it's been written about before as long as it is well written, quality, um, and on a reputable site, which opensource.com is. And the other great thing is that our editors are here to help you. We have an editorial team that is available to help you write. So, you know, we'll take your draft, we'll review it, we'll give you some feedback if we think that it can be improved, and we'll try to be as specific as possible so that you can improve it easily. Um, and if it's just something that we can't publish, we try to give you feedback on, you know, why it's not publishable. But our, we, we, you know, the great thing is that we do have that editorial team to really help you out. So if you've never written before or you're just not sure, how do I write a tutorial or what does that look like? We're, we're here to help you. We have lots and lots of really good examples that you can use as templates as well. So, um, you know, this is diving a little bit deeper into what exactly are the articles. So those are the topics. These are some of our most read articles and we have the original published date on the right hand side. So you'll see that even some articles written in 2017, 2018 are still very popular today. Um, and so these are great articles if you're looking for templates and you're looking for, okay, if I wanted to write something similar to an introduction to bash arrays, here's one that I could look at for what makes this a quality article. Um, what did they do with the introduction? What did they do with the format and the um, structure of the article? And what did they do with the conclusion? Um, and, you know, I don't think that these are clickable to you all that you can bring them up, although you could copy paste or type it into Google and find it. But I'd be happy to share any of these with you as well. Um, if you're if you're interested and you want to reach out and I'll have um, contact information at the end here. Um, you know, so we're covering things from how to use Git, how to use Python, again, how to use Linux. Bash is a great topic. Um, you'll see lots of Linux in here. We have GitHub, which is related to Git um, and and more Linux. <laughs> And then this is a list of articles, top articles written by our correspondents. So our correspondents is a key contributor group. It's about 20 people from all over the globe and they write 10 articles a year for us. And they're in a special program and we meet with them once a week. We talk about article ideas with them and um, we share stats with them. We have a discourse where we talk and hang out. Um, and it's really like, a special kind of writers group where if you're interested in writing that much 10 articles in 12 months is um, definitely doable especially with our editorial team's help but it's not you know a simple task either um, it's close to one a month so it's it's quite a bit of writing um, but we try to nurture those relationships and those groups as much as possible um, so they've written some really interesting stuff uh, 10 raspberry pi projects Raspberry Pi is in here, let's see, at least three times. Um, lots more Linux. Uh, home Assistant. Um, so we started writing about home automation a few years ago and it kind of did okay. Kind of saw some interest in it, but not a ton. Recently, we have seen a lot of interest in, in home automation articles. This is anything from, you know, how I use Home Assistant. This was a whole series. Um, on how uh, Steve Ovens used Home Assistant for his um, home automation. So that was a really neat series and he, you know, showed the different ways, had some pictures um, and some details there. So, you know, it's what's really interesting with our readers is how you take a tool, a command, a project and you use it in your, you know, in your daily life or just in your life. It doesn't have to be daily, but just in your own way. So there's a lot of great, great things there too. And so this is a list of the most downloaded content that we've published lately. So we have our articles, you know, that come out um, on a certain day and they live on as long as they live on, um, depending on how popular they are with readers. And then we also have this, um, these, um, these downloads. Um, some of them are eBooks, some of them are cheap cheat sheets. 
Um, and these are really great um, for, you know, kind of a different format for sharing your expertise. So um, we have Linux commands, we have Python, we have Raspberry Pi. Uh, this curl cheat sheet is fairly new that's done very well. Um, some Git in here. Um, and again, you know, our audience is very focused on developers, sysadmins, uh, uh, Linux enthusiasts, open source enthusiasts. And so that can, you know, it's kind of specific and then it gets more broad. So there's a lot of different people that can fall into those buckets. Um, but, you know, we, we find that those are the folks that are that are mainly using our downloads as well. So I wanted to leave some time if there was any Q&A here or in the chat, um, but I'll end on, you know, write for us, learn with us. Um, learn with us through reading, through connecting with us in other ways. Um, we are on Twitter and Facebook. Um, but then also, if you're interested in writing for us, we're here to talk through ideas, to help you write, to help edit, to revise, um, just to really be a guide. Um, so you can email me directly. You can email our editorial team. And then I also wrote an article that's on the source page about why it's important to write and how to get started. Um, and that's really focused on, well, what's the whole point of writing? Um, and I, I really like to share with people that if you are interested in um, meeting other like-minded people um, who, who are interested in the things that you're interested in, if you want to become kind of known for a, a topic in the community, writing about it is a really great way to, you know, let everybody know that you're into that thing. Um, and then another great thing is if you're interested in or looking for ways to get a promotion or move into a certain job or change tracks, um, that kind of thing, then writing about the, the things that you know and the things that you're trying to um, move to, if you, you know, um, know about a subject, but you're not working on that topic right now, but you'd like to, let's say you want to work on Kubernetes in a, you know, in a, in your next phase of your career, if you start writing about it and get your name out there and have a body of work really to show a um, hiring manager or a manager or a team um, that can really, really, I mean, it's just like an automatic, like, okay, yep. They know what they're talking about. They get it. Um, you know, yes or no to that, to that opportunity. So writing could be good for a lot of different, um, a lot of different reasons and a lot of different things. And again, our team is here to help with editing. Um, and so hopefully you got a good idea of what is popular on opensource.com. And again, we get, you know, close to 2 million page views a month. And so that should give you like, to me, it's not just what does well on opensource.com, but that's a good reflection of what is popular in the community, um, globally at large, um, in the world right now. So let me know if I can help in any way or share any of these um, direct URLs with you if you're interested in d diving deeper into the actual article itself. Yes, I will share the link for um, the article on the source. And if anyone has any questions for Jen, um, feel free to leave them in the Q&A chat.
Oh, and it looks like we have one question um, in the Q&A. It's from uh, Oleg. I don't know who that is, but it looks like they asked, how did you start writing? How did I personally start writing? Um, yeah. Okay, sure. Um, <laughs> I'm like, how did I start writing? I'll have to think about that for a second. Um, let's see. I, well, I mean, I've always, I've always kind of been a writer. Um, so I don't really know a time when I wasn't writing, but I would say in terms of writing about skills, you know, um, so if you want to share expertise that you have, skills that you have, experiences that you have, I really first started doing that by starting my own blog. Um, I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, and used to go to the Red Hat Tower before everything got shut down. And um, I was really into going to different places in downtown Raleigh um, because downtown Raleigh was changing a lot and growing a lot. And so I, and this is before I had kids. Um, <laughs> so I had a lot more free time on my hand, hands and I uh, started writing about things, um, places that I would go and things that I would do. And, and, and that was kind of my outlet for practicing writing, you know, like really practicing and doing it consistently over time. Um, I was a team of one, so I didn't have an editor and I didn't have a lot of feedback uh, except for, you know, kind of how, how many reads I would get on the site. Um, but that led me to the career that I have now, um, that connected with me with some people at Red Hat. Um, and it, and again, like kind of to the point of writing to advance your career, it, I had a body of work. So when I came to the interview, um, for working on a publication, I had a body of work to say, like, I can write, I can edit, I can produce content on a, on a consistent basis. Um, and, you know, I think most people that would join this talk are not going to be applying to a job at a publication. But, um, you know, the point is, is that if you have something to show um, that shows your expertise, um, that, you know, is getting you towards a goal, then that's huge. I mean, you, you know, you're not just talking about it in their interview, you have a portfolio, you have something to show. So um, that's how I got started and am still here today. <laughs> oh, I think you're muted. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was. I was going to ask, um, like, do you still face writer's block? I, I, do I still have my own blog? No, I mean, do you face writer's block? Oh, writer's block. Yes, for sure. Yes, I love that question. Yes, I do. Um, I think that that's just part of being human. And if you're a writer, then it's just kind of part of the, <laughs> part of the deal. Um, I don't write nearly as much as I used to. You know, so much of my job now is related to nurturing the community of contributors. So helping them get unstuck, helping them find um, topics to write about and focus their work. But they go, they go through writer's block, our key contributor group of people who write 10 articles in 12 months. I mean, I think part of the pressure of that is okay, what if, I, what if I go through writer's block and I have this commitment to write 10 articles in 12 months? Um, and so that's why our editorial team is, I think, so critical, you know, to really have a team that can spend time with the contributors and help them get unstuck and talk them through things and constantly be throwing ideas out there. I mean, we have a writer's list of over 500 people and I try to send out writing prompts and ideas uh, once a week. So I think kind of keeping that flow going is important for helping people kind of stay, stay in the flow and get it back in the flow when they need to, but also taking breaks. I mean, writer's block is maybe a sign of needing to take a break. So that's okay too. Yeah. And I think it's very human to not always want to be um, writing 24 seven. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do you think that there are any skills that someone can learn that aren't exactly writing, but, uh, kind of go hand in hand with it. Yeah, that's a good um, point. Like I, I definitely, I, I don't want to say s public speaking and make anybody feel like they need to do that. But I do think that it is similar in terms of 
part of the part of the challenge obstacles with writing is getting your thoughts together. And so you're like, okay, well, how do I do what I do? Okay, well, I need to start like organizing my thoughts so that I can write them down. Or if you're going to give a talk, organizing my thoughts so that I can speak them out loud. So I feel like getting organized is huge. And I like to, um, I do have some, I should have linked this, but I, I do have some, first of all, I have a worksheet for helping you think through what you could write about and getting granular about writing about it. And then I have a, um, yeah, the worksheet is related to like sort of how you would map it out. Um, and so using some sort of document to, you know, I use Google Docs for most things. And so some sort of document where you start to do an outline and break it down into pieces so that you can say, OK, well, I'm going to this is how I'm going to organize what I do and my thoughts and then and write it out. Because, I mean, I think even people who do public speaking write it out, right? You have a presentation and you're writing it out and getting it organized. Um, so public speaking does help with that. And we actually reach out to speakers at conferences and say, hey, you know, you did the work of turning what was in your head into something you could speak about. The next easy step is to write about it. You've already probably written about it. You just need to put it in article form. Yeah. Just making it accessible for other people to read. Yeah. Yeah, and that article that you were talking, the worksheet, that sounds super useful. Um, if you wouldn't mind linking that, I would personally uh, find that really useful. Okay, great. Yeah, it's on it's on GitHub, so I just need to, I think I just need to log in there and, and grab the link. I know that, like, for most people, probably writing is something that, I think it's a skill that kind of goes neglected because when we go through school, like you're kind of forced to write. And then once you get to college, you, it's no longer a requirement, maybe for like a couple yeah. of classes, but like it's very easy to forget that. And I think lately I've just been feeling like, wow, I really need to improve my skills because it's not something that I practice every day. So whenever I'm writing stuff, like maybe to friends or like, mm putting together ideas, going through that process of saying, okay, well, what is the thing I'm actually trying to think through and actually like forming that outline that really helps. And I think it's more than just writing. It's like a thought process and it's a thought pattern of materializing what's in your head. It is. And I, and I think it can even, you know, have a positive feedback loop to the work that you do. It's not just about getting it out for other people to see, whether it's for their benefit or your benefit, but it also like, oh, well, I thought through that. Now I'm like sitting down to go do that thing and I just feel more clear. Yeah, yeah, you can really go into things with confidence because you've extracted it out